tales for dark nights. Animal Cruelty by Martin Smith Read by Kristen Holland Up and away from the evening murmur of North Hollywood, a shadow clung to a dull green apartment building, and with great caution and short explosions of animation, approached the open window of Henry and Tabitha Herman. At the window, Henry busied himself with sketches and plans at his desk. The blue pencil ghost of a new indoor shopping mall stared back at him, but Henry's hands had become still of late. Nothing was finished but he had nothing more to wear. His shirt stuck to his back. He wiped the sweat from his moustache, dropped his pencil into an old yogurt pot, and looked in on Tabitha. And then he briefly exercised her and she became perfectly normal, the man in the red gown said on television. Tabitha's forehead was damp, her breathing shallow. She faced the wall, away from the crib, Henry meant to return it to the store last week. He made a mental note that he knew he would not have the heart to action. He closed the dresser to hide the unopened toys and the unhugged dolls. Greeting cards lined the dresser. Congratulations, it's a girl. With deepest sympathy. The man in the red gown asked them for a donation. Henry brushed Tabitha's hair from her eye and left to run a bath. Tabitha slept. The water was cool. Henry lay back, his stomach an island amidst the foam, and placed a cloth over his eyes. The fizzing of bubbles in his ears masked the sound of the door opening. The door looked out into the living room, toward Henry's desk and the open window. At this moment, as Henry stared into the darkness of the cloth, the door looked out onto something else entirely. The something else nudged the door inwards with its front leg. The front leg and its other seven took the something else into the bathroom in silence. The something else could be described if one was to take into account the eight legs, eight eyes, two pincers and bulbous fur covered back as a tarantula. The tarantula rivaled the bathtub in size. The door creaked shut. Henry opened his eyes to the green pattern of the cloth. He removed it and turned to greet Tabitha. Instead, a mass of eight blinking eyes and eight crooked legs looked back at him. The tarantula spoke with a voice like dying bears being dragged over jagged rocks. It said, Everything is quite all right. Henry stopped breathing entirely. His wide, white eyes searched the depths of the eight black ones that glistened before him. Henry could see no sign of life in those wet coals, yet still it moved. One of the eight legs moved towards the bath. Henry splashed it. The tarantula leapt to the ceiling, and there hissed and threw four of its legs outwards, making itself as big as an impractically large umbrella. Henry made himself small and cried out. It might have been words. Tabitha slept. Henry called to mind a prayer. Oh Christ, oh Christ, oh shit, oh Jesus. I knew I should have waited for you outside, the tarantula said. It twisted on the ceiling and dropped without a sound onto the linoleum. It turned to face Henry, each leg moving independently in speed and direction of the others, as though they were eight angular snakes biting at the floor. Henry shook his head. He readied his hands to splash again. I am ravenous, the tarantula said. Henry tried to limit the psychological damage of its appearance by focusing exclusively on one spot. Henry spoke only to the eyes. The legs were not there. He spoke only to two of the eyes. Please, Henry said. It was just a big dog. What do you want? A big dog with eight legs and... Oh, God. I didn't get this big. Eating flies and grasshoppers, the tarantula said, moving the pointed tip of a leg away from a pool of water. 
come out of there. Henry turned on the tap. The tarantula might have frowned. There was certainly grumbling. I'll splash you, Henry said. Don't come any closer. Listen, if my wife wakes up, she is good with spiders. The tarantula shifted. I'm good with wives, it said. The bath was filled to the top and Henry sunk into it as far as space would allow. He splashed a little towards the tarantula and it rose up on its back legs and hissed, jerking away from the water. Ghastly behavior, the tarantula said. There really is no need for this kind of nonsense. I'm not moving, Henry said with a frown. He lowered his head into the water, a balding crocodile. You need to get out before your wife finds me. The tarantula turned its head towards the closed bathroom door. It would be a waste. I couldn't eat too. The crocodile emerged. Why me? Henry said. What made you pick me? What has Henry James Herman ever done to you? Why my house? Your window was open, the tarantula said. I haven't done anything. We've never hurt anyone. You're not being punished. Not me, though. Not me. Not us. The guy across the hall? He's a shut-in. He shouts at kids and collects shrunken heads. All he does is watch game shows. He gets shrunken heads in the mail. I've seen them. Your window was open, the tarantula said. That's it? My window was open? That's it, Henry. My wife needs me. That doesn't matter to me, Henry. Without me... The tarantula moved slightly, so that it could appear to shake its head. It was actually more of a tilt due to the structure of the head's connection to the body, but the illusion was still of a shaking head. It had clearly practiced the maneuver at home. I have money, Henry said. What do you presume I would spend money on? Just take it. Take anything you want. The tarantula inched forward. Henry backed up. Please don't kill me, Henry said. Please. The tarantula looked around the bathroom. It used its legs to spin and rotate its body to allow its quite inflexible head to take everything in. The wiggling motion reminded Henry of an exotic dancer and chilled him to the bone. The tarantula looked back to Henry. Go get it. Go get the money for me, the tarantula said. Really? Really. Get it. Henry stood up, shivering, and cupped his genitals. The tarantula moved back eight tiny steps. Is the check okay? The hair on the tarantula's back was standing on end. A check will be fine, it said. Henry placed a foot on the side of the bath. You promise not to kill me. You have my word, the tarantula said, scraping its words out through gritted pincers. As a gentleman. Henry froze and studied the pincers. They were big enough to grab his entire head. A moment passed and he blinked himself free of them. He met some of the tarantula's eyes. What? The tarantula said. What? Henry said. Get my money. Get it. Henry slinked back down into the water. I, I left my checkbook in work. You don't need it, the tarantula said. You're free to go. Really? Why? Your wife. She needs you. You know. Henry slumped in the water. He looked at the mirror cabinet and saw in it the reflection of the bathroom ceiling. We lost a child, Henry said. The Lord took her away. The tarantula shifted uncomfortably. Okay, Henry said. He stood up. He did not cup his genitals. You can leave. You first, the tarantula said. Henry saw the clever trap and kicked water at the tarantula and cursed. So nothing we do matters? I'm dead because I left the window open? Nothing else we've ever done makes any difference? The tarantula spoke slowly, 
and clearly. Not to me. Henry sat on the back edge of the bath, with his feet in the water. It should matter, he said, holding his head in his hands. It should. The tarantula crept forward, its voice low as Henry sobbed into his palms. You have no point, Henry. None of you do. You're just beasts. It's good enough for me. The tarantula reached the bath, and its front two legs pushed up off the side. It's good enough for dogs and fish. It's good enough for the millions of humans who die every day who you don't love. There are no exceptions, Henry. Tabitha rubbed her eyes, walked to the television and turned it off. Henry looked down at his ugly, hairy feet in the water and saw nothing else. He didn't see the tarantula slowly climbing into position around him. He saw only ugly feet and heard only the tarantula's voice. Nothing you could ever do would have amounted to anything, Henry. You are animals here to serve your own bodies. When you die, you are dead. Your child is in a box in the ground. Its hot breath smelt of sulfur. It's my turn to be served now, Henry. My body needs something. The tarantula's front legs leaned against the wall behind Henry. At full stretch, it was large enough to completely engulf him in its legs. Meat, it said. You're all just so much meat. Tabitha closed the window above Henry's desk. She picked up a downturned photograph. In it, Henry and Tabitha smiled in a hospital bed and looked down at their daughter. Tabitha placed the photograph back face down and headed for the bathroom. The tarantula's face lingered above Henry's throat. This will be over quickly, it said. You will be over. You'll have your own box in the ground. I can't think of a better reward for all the nothing you've done. Henry cried. You're wrong, he said, and louder. You're wrong. The door opened. Tabitha screamed. Henry kicked out at the spider as it turned, sending it onto its back on the floor. He leapt on top of it with both feet, and its legs ripped at his skin as he stabbed through the fragile torso and landed feet first in the tarantula's insides. Black blood sprayed up Henry's body, over his uncupped genitals and onto his face. Henry stamped again and again as the tarantula roared and its legs tore at his flesh. Black and red blood hit the walls. Tabitha took the bathroom scales and slammed them with both hands down onto the tarantula's melon head. It burst across the linoleum. The tarantula's legs stopped moving. Its roar quieted to a gasp, which quieted to nothing. The tarantula died. Oh, God, Tabitha said. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. She held Henry. Where is she, Tabby? Where's our girl? Henry said. He couldn't look at her. Tabitha stroked Henry's intestine-slicked hair. She's gone. She's gone. She's in heaven. The black blood of the tarantula pooled up about them as they kneeled together on the floor holding each other. Do you really believe that? Henry said. Henry looked at Tabitha. Tabitha's eyes searched the floor for words and found nothing. Henry had words, but he did not have the heart to speak them. Henry, for the first time, thought not of angels. He thought not of grand plans and mysterious ways. A scraping, scratching sound began. Scratches on linoleum. Life returned to the tarantula's broken legs. They moved slowly, cautiously. A hiss of breath was drawn. The remaining eyes on the tarantula's head began to blink. The pincers began to creak back into action, with its half-smashed face dribbling blood. The legs stretched out, big enough to touch the ceiling, feeling around the room. 
Henry and Tabitha let go of one another and stood apart. Their eyes did not meet. The tarantula spoke. Henry knew then it would not die. Beasts, it said. You beasts. Henry thought of a small box in the ground. For the first time, Henry let himself see the dead animal inside it. If you'd like to hear more short horror stories from this narrator, check out the Nocturnal Transmissions podcast. Available on iTunes, Android, CastBox and Stitcher. Or find us through our website, nocturnaltransmissions.com.au. I do hope you can join us. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.